Water is one of the most important resources here on the Hutchinson Ranch. It helps grow this hay that then feeds the horses and cattle through the winter. But with a fire threatening the homes of their neighbors, they wanted to help out however they could. It's a no-brainer. Obviously, there's a higher and better use, and we want to keep our neighbors up on Methodist safe, and um, we would have never thought twice about it. Favorable weather led Incident Command to take an aggressive approach on the Decker fire, especially with their air attack. For Laura Ross, the bitter cold didn't matter Thursday night. She focused on sending a message amid heartbreak. You know, if you can come out and pray with each other and hold each other's hands and lift each other up and hope for the best, sometimes that's all you can do. The message, love, unity, and hope, on display in a candlelight vigil at Memorial Park, bringing together neighbors and strangers in support of a family most of them don't know. It's always sad when you hear of cases like this, um, but this one being so close to home, uh, we, we just felt like it's the least that we can do. Vanessa Nichols and Amber Overton organizing Thursday's vigil, which closed in prayer. They say they're trying to keep spirits high with Cheryl Barreth, Kelsey's mother, in attendance. Just a year after one of Colorado's busiest and worst fire seasons on record, 2019 has been quiet, relatively calm, thanks to a wet winter and spring. The lack of major fire activity during the first part of the year doesn't mean we're out of the woods just yet. In fact, the threat could just be starting. People need to be just as cognizant now, especially with the cooler nights and they get lackadaisical because of that false sense of security. You got to be very careful with that. Jim Shannell serves as the deputy fire warden for the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. He says all the moisture we received in the early parts of 2019 now works against us. Helping grass and shrubs grow taller, meaning fires have more to burn. An instant attention grabber. The first sighting of tracer smoke, the roar of jet engines. I get emotional when I see them. It just gives you like a sense of pride in your country. The Thunderbirds flyover marks Air Force Academy graduation. It's also a community event. I have actually never um, been able to come. First timers here because they've heard about it from others who come a lot. Been here every year. I was born at the Air Force Academy, lived my whole life, and it's just a tradition for us to do this. We also have been doing this since 2002. Every year we come out and watch it. I'm a local fan of his. He's a really nice guy. He puts on a good show. Anytime he comes here, he packs this place. From 7 p.m. Saturday to 7 p.m. Sunday, a total of 24 straight hours. The music maker at the Chicken Coop was Pappy Sorellis. To be able to dedicate 24 hours to that is kind of incredible. He's here to raise thousands for firefighter cancer research. <laughs> with donations literally pouring in around the clock. A portion of the money coming from food and drinks also going directly to the cause. When he came to me and said, I want to do this at your bar, we felt honored. This community also honored to be able to help their firefighters. Well, it's a pivotal day for the firefight here at the Decker Fire because today at 7 o'clock this morning, a Type 1 incident management team, the best available, took command of this fire. As you can see here behind me, plenty of cars. We've got energy trucks. We've got fire trucks from really all over the West, all over Colorado, that are now here to help fight this fire that was once managed and now is posing a real threat to homes and nearby values at risk. Let's take a look at the fire right now. It's, it's relatively quiet this morning, but still the firefight is already active. We've seen air resources as we expected uh, really kind of ramping up their efforts now that the flames are in a reachable spot for firefighters on the ground to actually engage them and have a real impact. As you see a helicopter right now dropping uh, what looks like water in a hot spot there along Methodist Mountain. So, uh, you know, the operations section chief, they just released an update on Facebook not too long ago saying that they expect air resources to be used quite frequently today as this fire kind of creeps down downhill, which is not typical for fire, but it's doing it anyway, creeping downhill towards structures. Um, you know, so far they have 125 structures evacuated on, on mandatory status. They've already brought in dozens more firefighters to help protect those homes. So it's going to be a big day. They have the most experienced firefighters here and really from all over the West helping 
to contain this fire. We'll see if they can actually ramp up some containment when we get some updated numbers at a press conference later this afternoon. Yeah, Zach, uh, as you can see right now, the Safeway behind me here and some of the shops around it are back open, but this was all after that suspicious package. And now whenever something like that happens, the sheriff's office and police are going to take all the necessary precautions. So what did happen out here in this parking lot? Well, we're right next to the area where the suspicious package was left and a man drove up in a silver hatchback, left an old brown suitcase right here on this median, decided that was the best place for it, then drove back off. A customer of Safeway ended up seeing that package, ended up telling an employee. The employee called the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office had to come out here and close this area down, and it led to quite the attraction in Falcon on a Sunday afternoon. Well, Rob, it is exactly what people here wanted to see today. Lighter winds steering the fire away from town, but the fire is still only a few miles away, and that has this idyllic town sitting on pins and needles. Everything's going great out here now. Check out the crowd behind me here at the chicken coop. Everyone's super excited to be here to support the second annual piano marathon. I want to show you how much time we have left here. This countdown says we have one minute, 32 minutes left, and I'm going to be joined by the man of the hour, Pat, Pat, Pappy Sorellis. He's been the one who's been belting out tunes, playing the piano for almost 24 hours. Pappy, how are you feeling? Uh, we're hanging in there. <laughs> hanging in. It's, uh, it's hurting. How's your voice doing? It's hurting. <laughs> how much money have we raised out here? Uh, we raised over $7,500 so far, so we still have a chance to get to $10,000, so... Bring it on, bring it on. Is that the goal, 10000 It really is. We'd like to get to $10,000. We're at 7500 We feel good about that, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Talk to me about what has gone into raising all this money and how it helps fund cancer research. Well, a lot of people, a lot of people giving their time, a lot of people giving great, great raffles away, uh, just people spending their time, and then uh, being consistent with everybody here and having the community come out. And it just takes a lot of work on those ends. And we were blessed to have everybody come in on that. So. And For folks who can't be out here tonight and they want to help out, what can they do? They can get down here right away and give us some money. <laughs> That's what they can do. You heard him. So you have until 7 o'clock tonight to come out here, grab a drink, order some food, listen to Pappy's music, and we'll also have a live recap for you coming up on News 5 at 10. For us who were there uh, and who responded, it's absolutely important that we take time to remember because we cannot let this event fade into the dust of history. My dad is in the U.S. Air Force Reserves and he was called in that day and I wasn't sure when he would come home. My father was a volunteer firefighter. Uh, my uncle was a volunteer firefighter. And it really means a lot to me whenever I know that I'm serving in a military that remembers those men and women that lost their lives in 9-11 attacks. It's 5.30 on a Sunday, and high schoolers are up before the sun. Yeah, really. Vote number eight, Josie, Colton, and Mike. The reason? State championship bass fishing. This is our biggest year yet. It's our ninth year for the tournament, having the tournaments out here, and we've got 27 boats today. 54 kids from across the state and five Southern Colorado schools, Cheyenne Mountain and Coronado among them. I guess when this bass league came up, really like, that really intrigued me a lot. I think there's just a different aspect to, to bass fishing than any other sport, any other team sport. Fishing in teams of two, this is anything but a leisure activity. A lot of the locals here say even if we have our Christmas tree up, Yule Log is really the start of Christmas around here. All of these people, 300 plus, will just run and go crazy running all over the place until the log is found. So you see friends, the Yule Log in many ways and many days stands for something beyond just the hunt. It stands for community and family. Okay, come on, let's go!
We planned this for months, probably another uh, six weeks we've been planning to get this all together. And this is one of the biggest ones we've had in a long time. Yeah, I'm not good. I don't care. Get set. From one rush. Well, it's fun. To another. You do about 35, 40 miles an hour in this car. It's a family affair for the Rush clan. I meet a bunch of new friends. First time down, it's terrifying. You can trace it through history. It's, you know, what our family does. Each generation with one thing in common. Soapbox derby races. It's just a family thing. It just brings people together, working on the cars and, and going through all the stuff. I mean, there's a lot of preparation. You just figured if you're gonna go fishing first, might as well do it ice fishing first. My wife finds these things. So she finds, she said it's a good deal, it's a once in a lifetime thing, and I said, well, that sounds great. There isn't a whole lot of um, fishing opportunities in the wintertime. So this is an opportunity, you, you get outdoors in the winter, as long as you get the, the right gear, you can spend all day out on the ice. And it was really educational, really great to just have a kid out here and learn and be out in the wilderness and experience it. There you go. Whoa! Hey. There you go. It's also fun that you know that you're going to catch a fish. Timothy Chan.